Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your host, Dion Amade. Let's talk a little football. No, not that fall football. I'm talking about seven on seven football. It's changing how high school players are getting ready for the upcoming season and how they're getting recruited. We'll talk to the program director over at Sooner 7, Derek Rasmussen, and we'll talk to our guy, Michael Knight, as Prep Red Zone recently put on their own 7-on-7 tournament. Well, first, let's talk to Derek Rasmussen. So for those who don't know, you are the founder and program director of Sooner 7, a local, a local kind of statewide seven on seven team here in Oklahoma. If I if I have that correctly, am yeah, I am yeah. I butchering any of that? Yeah, no, that's 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 right. Yeah. No, we uh we have kids from all over the state. It's not just Tulsa. Um we have we've had kids, you know, all the way from Weatherford and Northwest and honestly to be honest, Northwest Arkansas as well now. Um but yeah, so it's a it's a statewide thing and um it's been good so far for um you know the uh, athletes here in the state of Oklahoma. So, so what got you? I know you, you, you've trained athletes and, and you've trained a, a number of you know really good quarterbacks here in the in the state and athletes all in general. But like, how did you kind of get your start doing all that? Um, you know, I, I had friends uh, just that I had met through the game, uh, especially even during the arena slash indoor time in my life. And uh, you know, a lot of them were doing the private training. Um, I saw it you know, through social media and I was interested and, uh, reached out to a friend. Um, and he kind of got me plugged in with the right people. Um, and then from then on, I just, it just kind of grew and grew and grew. And, uh, you know, I just kind of straight, uh, stayed true to my, you know, keeping the kids first and making it about the kids. And then, you know, kind of just one thing led to another. How important is seven on seven to the game now? And, and this generation, um, in this generation, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, not necessarily crucial, but I think uh, the skill acquisition that comes from it, if done properly and, and taught properly, I think there's there's a lot of benefits. I like always say, you know, all work is not created equal. Um, if it's done right, uh, you know, each position can get better and, you know, kind of see it as a way to bridge the gap for those kids that, you know, necessarily maybe don't wrestle, maybe they don't, you know, maybe they don't you know, play basketball, that kind of stuff. And I know people always think seven on seven and it's like synonymous with summer, but you know, our, our seasons from January until about April. And then, um, especially with our 18, you we're done by May so that it's time for them to get back into the combine circuits, uh, get back with their school, you know, spring ball coming up, you know, we're just kind of a January to beginning mid April, kind of a, you know, bridge the gap time. And, uh, you know, but I do think, uh, I do think some of the stuff, that I've seen over the past, uh, this is our fifth season. Um, I, I do see a lot of improvement uh, from a lot of the kids, uh, you know, that they go out there and, you know, anytime you're out there working against other top level athletes and, and kids that are, you know, have the same goals as you, I, I, I don't really see how it can't be beneficial. I, I'd like to think we do a good job of, of keeping stuff um, as real to Fridays as possible. Obviously you can't, and, and, you know, you run into teams that out there that kind of run what I, what I call flag football stuff and, you know, not real concepts, but I know on offense, uh, you know, outside of a few plays we run, uh, that are nuances within the seven on seven game. You know, a lot of our stuff is three, five, seven, step drops, uh, pure progression for the quarterbacks. We run a lot of, um, uh, you know, everybody thinks seven on seven. Oh, it's just two man. You know, we run a lot of zone defenses and teach our kids principles, uh, you know, you know, uh, route combinations and stuff like that. We try to keep it as real as possible because ultimately at the end of the day, I mean, it's kind of a two, it's kind of a two, uh, two goal thing for us. One, we want to, you know, we want the kids better than they got when they got there. Um, you know, we want to, want them to improve. But I think the other thing, you know, that we do is, is we try to get our kid, uh, get the kids that are in our program out there as far as Twitter. And uh, we've built a pretty good social media following on Twitter and Instagram. And we just try to get those kids out there. And, and especially in today's NIL world, building brands is a huge thing. And, uh, you know, I feel like we do a good job of, uh, of, of projecting our kids out there and getting them, you know, um, seen more not only by colleges but now by more people you know generates more followers ends up into more you know more uh, 
a bigger following for the kid as far as his social media goes and the larger reach. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk to my man Derek about 7-on-7 seven seven and the Sooner 7 and how that team got formed. When we come back here on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with the program director of Sooner 7, Derek Rasmussen. Derek, I, I remember back in my day, okay, I am from Dallas, Texas, playing seven on seven during the summer and, and during the, you know, off season with our teammates. It wasn't as official. It was kind of like coaches getting together, putting a couple of teams in, you know, certain locations and us, you know, kind of just getting some extra practice and extra preparation. Now it's turned into kind of like this big league where you're playing with kids around the state that you're that are not on your same team. It's not just high school high schools getting together and playing it's you know a big ordeal kind of like aau basketball so talk to us about sooner seven a little bit and 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 why you know seven on seven has grown so so big right uh you know our first year um like after i'd reached out to dwight we went to one tournament our first year uh we were lucky uh blessed to be honest um you know i had a good graphics guy behind the branding um obviously i had a relationship with battle and uh you know that that first group of kids you know uh, was a very special group you know that was the the dax hill dj jones jj hester peyton thompson darius boone um you know a lot of kids kate cavender um, a lot of guys on that group that uh, really kind of set the tone for Sooner 7 moving forward. Uh, you know, kids were getting on and it was brand new in Oklahoma. And so everybody was like, oh, what is this? What is this? What is this? You know, and then they see all these, these you know, these fantastic football players uh, playing for this one team. And then that's, you know, year two, we had an open tryout and it was like 125 kids for an 18U team. And so then it just, it kind of grew from there. And, uh, you know, I know everybody says that, you know, the AAU basketball thing and, um, you know, we we just try to get our kids into the best possible situations when it comes to competition because we, we want to play the best. So we don't go to a lot of these smaller tournaments. We we typically stick to, you know, the bigger tournaments where we know, you know, the 18 U pool is going to be more than 24 teams. And so that's kind of our basis. If it's less than 24 teams, we typically don't go. So when you when you check out things on social media and you, when you go to these tournaments, it seems like the kids are having so much fun. I mean, they're doing celebrations and doing backflips and, and, and having fun, things that you don't see on Friday nights. What's kind of like the atmosphere? What's kind of like the culture of 7-on-7? Seven seven you know, the culture of 7-on-7 seven seven is, uh, you know, the, like you just talked about, actually, the kids are having fun. Um, you know, and, and I try to walk that line very closely of, you know, the excessive stuff because it does get, I mean, you know, the one thing that seven on seven differs from, you know, real football is that a seven on seven tournament, it's a lot more like basketball and the fact that, you know, there's fans, there's kids that they played against, there's other teams and they're standing probably within, you know, five to 10 yards of the field. So if somebody gets, you know, somebody scores a touchdown or something on a Friday night, um, you're not hearing what is being said, uh, you know, and same thing if you're a quarterback, stuff like that. But in seven on seven, it's just so much more of an intimate and an intense setting because of probably, you know, to be honest, the proximity, um, the proximity of the fans, they're, they're like right on top of you. So it kind of adds a layer that is good and bad. Um, but, you know, I, I think it sums up. We, I, I just, you know, did a video the other day. Um, with our 12U and, and just seeing the, their faces, like when uh, we won our we won the 12U division, like just you know that that's all that matters to me is like you know the kids are having fun, um, they're enjoying themselves, and it's it's literally what you know pure joy. So, speaking of winning, I, I heard the Sooner Seven did a good job at this recent Prep Red Zone. Uh, seven on seven tournament in knee heist park in broken arrow recently and took away some some big trophies and hardware and in, in a lot of divisions what is uh what was that tournament like and, and can you explain how what's what's the reason for all the success for sooner seven um you know i think uh, I, it has to come down to you know it's it's twofold um i think our, i think we have really really good coaches that understand the game all of our coaches uh, play football at a high level um, all the quarterbacks have played in college. Um, and then I think obviously the kids, uh, we have, we have a fantastic group of kids, fantastic group of parents, um, that is kind of bought into our vision. I know everything we do is like hashtag built, uh, you know, built different. And, and the built different thing is not just on the fact that, you know, we're built different because we're better. It's built different because, you know, uh, we built this 
from the ground up differently than a lot of other teams. You know, uh, we don't have one 18U team. We carry three at most tournaments. And, uh, you know, the main thing when we started this was exposure for Oklahoma athletes. And so I thought like I was doing a disservice if I just created like super teams at each level. And so, you know, typically when you go to a sooner, uh, seven on seven tournament, you'll see two, three, 18 U teams that are, you know, sooner seven. And, um, you know, that was a testament this weekend, 18 U. I think we had all three teams of ours were in the quarterfinals. And then, um, you know, um, uh, we actually played each other to go to the semifinals. So, uh, you know, we did have a good weekend though. Our 12U won, our 14U won uh, the tournament. Our 15U lost in the championship uh, to a really good True Bus team out of Dallas by one possession. And then um, 18U won over a team out of Kansas City. So yeah, it was a great weekend. It's, it's you know, there's been other years where at a tournament in Tulsa, we've made four teams in the finals and came away with no championship. So, you know, it's a process and, and these kids have been in our system now, um, offensively and defensively, some of these kids for four and five years. And so, um, you know, I've seen some of these kids when they were 13, now they're 17. So, you know, I feel like that's a, that's an advantage for us because these kids understand how we do things and they understand how we operate and how we conduct ourselves. Well, it sounds like you guys have done things the right way for, for those who are kind of interested or just want to get to know you and some of your players a little bit more, where can they kind of look for things from sooner seven? Um, our, our Twitter page is, uh, I need to get better at Facebook, but our, Twitter page is at sooner seven V seven. And then it's the same thing on uh, Instagram and, you know, try to try to keep everybody up to date on that. And uh, that's where we post anything uh, is where like what tournaments we're going to um, any of our athletes to get special accolades, whether it's football or in track or anything like that. We try to, like I said, we try to project our kids out there and uh, you know, uh, we stay uh, steady retweeting and, and doing whatever we can to help these kids, uh, you know, bridge the gap and uh, get to college and get it paid for. That's the goal. <laughs> That's the goal. Thank you so much for joining us today, Derek, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on. Well, that is Derek Rasmussen, the man that's in charge of Sooner 7 over there in Oklahoma and doing some good things on that 7-on-7 seven seven front. Well, coming up next, we'll be talking to Michael Knight from Prep Red Zone. He's got more to add from that Prep Red Zone 7-on-7 seven seven tournament that we got to witness this weekend. We'll be right back here on Ford High School Week. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. Well, we continue on the direction of seven on seven football. And here recently, the guys at Prep Red Zone were able to host a tournament that we got to take part in. So let's go ahead and talk to our guy, Michael Knight from Prep Red Zone. Michael, how's it going? It's going good, man. I'm tired. I'm tired. It was a long weekend in Broken Arrow, but it was a great weekend. So uh, happy to talk about it, man. Man, so I was able to get out there and check out all the spectacular athletes and the, the great job that you guys at Prep Red Zone did. I'm putting on your first annual seven on seven tournament at Nehi's Park over there in Broken Arrow. I mean, kind of talk to us about what it what went into kind of putting something like that together. I mean, how many teams did y'all have out there? Like 65? Yeah, we ended with 65. Uh, I joked, you know, uh, the corporate bosses, they were uh, going to be happy with 30 uh, for this first one. So the fact that we pulled 65, that definitely uh, raised some eyebrows and opened up some eyes about what we can do in the seven on seven space. And uh, 65 teams, eight states represented. We even had a team from Minnesota come all the way down to Oklahoma to get some work in Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, uh, Arkansas, Texas, uh, Mississippi. We had a lot of great talent, over a thousand players out there. And not only did we have some really good players, but we had guys that, you know, are going to play on Saturday for sure. And then we even had quite a few kids that are going to end up playing on Sundays. Not only did we have a lot of players out there this weekend, but we had some legitimate star power as well. So uh, it was a lot of work. It started last year and uh, you now we got one down and we have another one coming up next month in Nashville. And then in 2024, we're uh, expanding this thing quite a bit. All right, man. You guys seem to be on a hot streak right now, looking to continue on that trend. But let's go ahead and and take a deep dive into what went into kind of putting in the first, you know, tournament. What were some of the hard parts about, you know, logistically putting this all together? Yeah, I think, I mean, you're, you're building it from the ground up and you're trying to take stuff from what other people do. And it's like, okay, well, how do we want to do it? And how do we want to separate ourselves? And there's plenty of other people out there that that do 
seven on seven tournaments and there's organizations that do a really good job and they're going to continue to do a good job. And we don't see ourselves as competing with them because we have the coverage aspect, because we have our website and our social media platforms where we're covering these kids 24, seven, 365. So now you combine the aspect of the tournament with our coverage and these kids are going to get more exposure and more coverage than they've ever gotten at any other seven on seven tournament uh and in addition to what we did i also invited guys like yourselves and other outside media in i'm like let's get as many cameras and as many guys covering these kids as possible and that's what all of this is about that's why these kids play that's what these kids are looking for and so we started you know probably the conversations really started getting serious in october about making this thing we have staff up in Minnesota in the Chicago area. They flew in on Friday to get things set up at the park. And we had all of our stuff set up, ready to go. And then uh, packed it all up once uh, the tournament was over on Sunday. And we'll take it on over to Nashville next month. So it's a lot of work to put this thing on, but I couldn't be happier with our team. You know, I have to give a shout out to our champions. You know, Sooner 7 is, in my opinion, the marquee 7-on-7 seven seven program in Oklahoma. And it's not just because Derek, who's their program director, he's my guy. I've known him since he really started that program. Uh, he builds a, a program that is respectable across the country. Um, and, and, you know, we had four divisions, 12U, 14U, 15U, and 18U. And he had one team in every single division championship game. And they won three of them. They won 12, 14, and 18. Uh, they fell short to True Buzz in the 15U championship game. Uh, but but Sooner 7 definitely left their mark on the Sooner State shootout over the weekend. Yes, they definitely did. I was able to check out some of those guys and, and see some of the talent they have on that squad. It's pretty impressive. Got to talk to Derek a little earlier. What? Well, but you know what? Let's go ahead and go to a, a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk to Mr. Michael Knight about so much more and some of the athletes that were at this big time tournament that they put on for the first time for OK Press. We'll be right back here on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with Prep Red Zone's own Michael Knight about the 7-on-7 seven -seven tournament that happened this past weekend. Michael Knight, talk to us about some of these extraordinary athletes that took place on the field. I mean, you said these are guys, a number of guys that are already, you know, got offers and they, that are definitely going to play on Saturday. But some dudes that you saw that had the ability to potentially maybe be in one of these drafts that we're looking at down the line. So talk talk a little bit about it. Well, we got to start with the uh, upcoming senior class, the 2024 group, and uh, very happy that we had the top two guys in that class in Oklahoma. Danny Okoye from NOAA, he he has over 30 Division One offers, and then Zadavian Sims from Durant, who has probably over 30 Division One offers. They were in the same complex at the same time. It's not very often you get the top two guys in, in a state's class in the same building, so uh, very to happy, very happy to have them, and they both have, you know, a, a good chance to end up playing on Sunday. They're freak athletes, and they're defensive linemen. They're defensive linemen, and that tells you what kind of athlete they are, that they can run around, play a little tight end, play a little linebacker in a seven-on-seven -seven setting. So really impressed with them and what they were able to do in the 2025 class. As I've talked with you about a, a few times, that quarterback class – uh, in 2025 in Oklahoma is pretty special. And we had three of those top 10 quarterbacks with uh, Shaker Isaac from Union, Jamari and Fifflin from Muskogee, and uh, Grady Adamson from Deer Creek. So that 25 class just keeps getting deeper and deeper. We also had Jaden Nickens from Millwood. He's a freak athlete. He was there on Sunday. And then um, in the 26th group, we had the top two guys in the state with Colton Yarborough from Durant, another defensive lineman playing some seven on seven, all of six foot six athlete can move around a little bit. Uh, he was a nightmare for offenses because he's just standing in the middle of a defense playing linebacker. And it's like, if you try to throw over the middle, he's going to get his hands on it in some way. But it was good to see him running around. Uh, he had power five offers before he even entered high school. And then KD Jones, a lot of people will remember Kiwan Jones from his time at Jinx and OU. His son, who's a freshman running back at Broken Arrow, had a breakout season last fall with over a thousand yards, was our freshman of the year. 
uh, for the 2022 season, and he was there with the unit, and uh, he had a really good showing as well, uh, playing on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. So, not like I said earlier, man, I'm really happy with you know not only the players that we brought out. There was so much good competition everywhere. Um, there were a lot of players that made a ton of plays. We're going to have a ton of coverage on our website talking about them breaking them down, you know, what they did well, what they look like, you know, where they could play at the next level. Um, But then at the same time, people love stars, right? People want to recognize names and see kids that, you know, could end up playing at the highest of high levels and that being the NFL. And I, you know, I don't like talking about NFL for high school kids because it's way too early, but at the same time, you also have to be realistic. Some of those guys are going to play on Sunday and uh, very happy to see him perform well this past weekend. Well, Michael, like we end all these interviews with you, if everybody are looking out for things from Prep Red Zone, where do they find it? Yeah, you can check us out. The best thing to do is follow us on Twitter at Prep Red Zone OK. We have a ton of tweets from over the weekend, pictures, videos. Uh, throughout the week, we're going to be putting up article after article on all the divisions, not just the older kids, some of the middle school kids as well, uh, talking about who shined brightest at this tournament. And it's a very long list, so we're going to be writing about a lot of kids. You can check check us out on PrepRedZone.com slash Oklahoma. And if you are with a 7-on-7 organization and you're wanting to get out to a Prep Red Zone event, we do have one coming up in March in Nashville, Tennessee. We're looking forward to getting out there for our next event. And then coming soon in 2024, we're expanding this. Not only are we back in Oklahoma, but we're going to be in some of the surrounding states as well. So stay tuned because this is just the start for us here at Prep Red Zone. Love to hear it. Once again, thank you so much for for putting this on. Congratulations on the first annual 7-on-7 tournament. You guys did a spectacular job. And thank you, man, for having Ford High School Weekly out there to be a part of it. As always, man, you know you're my guy. I always got you. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Be sure to go to yourview.com slash OK for highlights and replays of the Ford Game of the Week. And check out our podcast and past episodes at yourview.com slash OK. Only the best in Oklahoma, like the athletes here at the Prep Red Zone 7-on-7 seven seven tournament, make the Ford High School Weekly. So thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm Dion Amade. Ford High School Weekly has been brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma.